what a beautiful morning. I'm in the far east of the easternmost island in Spain, Menorca, which I think makes me the first person to witness the start of another beautiful day. Come with me as I bring you the 10 best reasons to come to Menorca, starting with sunrise. Nature has smiled upon Menorca. Although it's less than one-fifth the size of its big sister, Mallorca, this modest Balearic island has many natural highlights, beginning with the corrugated coastline that wraps around it. The influence of man has for once been largely benign, with heritage surviving from Bronze Age mystery to British naval history. After a start like that, the only way to continue the day in style is with breakfast on the terrace of the Son Granot. <laughs> Hello. Hello, how lovely this is. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you. This 300-year-old rural escape was one of the first creations by the British who were lured by the fine natural harbour of Mahon at the east of the island. They took over in 1708 and four years later built this Georgian treasure. Today it's my top choice as a place to stay. And you get your own private terrace leading to a sumptuous suite. Rural, rustic and very comfortable. It's tricky to count the many beaches along Menorca's seductive shoreline, at least one for every day of summer I make it, and they've been very well looked after with none of the excessive development that scars some other Mediterranean islands. At Cala Galdana, I met a man who's made a career of studying the beaches of Menorca. There are so many beaches, there are more beaches in Menorca than in Mallorca and Ibiza put together. And each beach is, is different. Perhaps Menorca is most famous for its virgin beaches, for its unspoilt beaches. Um, you have to be prepared sometimes to walk uh, five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes to get to these beaches. But it's well worth the effort. These beaches are absolutely fabulous. <music> Menorca has a little city at each end of the island, Maon in the east and here, Ciutadella in the west. Ciutadella is the better. It bears the imprint of all the waves of people who've been through here over the millennia. The Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, the Romans, the Moors, the Spanish, the British, even the French, and now the tourists. We've all left our mark, but it still looks lovely. Ceuta de la long ago lost its status as capital to Maon, but has lost none of its charm. The ancient streets straggle prettily through the old town, which at its heart has the handsome 14th century cathedral. But gravity and appetite will lead you back down to the waterside. And the harbour is the location for one of my favourite restaurants on the island, the Café Beliard. I've been allowed a backstage tour to see how Santiago uh, uh, Buenos Dias prepares arroz caldoso, which is an island speciality. Good luck. Oh, in go the langoustines. Smells divine. Oh, how beautiful. Arroz caldoso translates approximately as sloppy rice, but I prefer to regard the dish as the richest seafood soup I've ever tasted. Lunch as a work of art. What did the British ever do for Menorca? Well, quite a lot, actually. Particularly one of the early governors, Richard Kane. He did all sorts of things. He introduced weights and measures, crop rotation, and crucially, he built the first road across the island. Kane's Highway is still here, and you can drive along much of it. And it's a lovely, low-speed way to see the island. So do try the road of Kane if you're able. Four wheels good, two wheels better. Menorca is full of all sorts of places you can only reach on a bike. 
The island is preserved as a biosphere reserve, which means bikes are welcome where cars can't go. Away from the main highway, there's hardly any traffic and plenty of trails on which to test your skills and your brakes. You can join an organized trip with a man who left his homeland of Uruguay to come to Menorca because he loves the cycling so much. In Menorca, we find different places. It's a good exercise and feel good in few kilometers and the bicycle permit uh, arrive to different places in 30 minutes, one hour, no more. If two legs is more your idea of fun, well, you're in luck as well, because running right around the island is this beautiful ancient pathway, the Camille de Cavals. A gate made from the olive trees that grow wild across Menorca is just one example of the way that the path has been carefully developed for sustainable tourism. The path of the horses, as the name translates, is sprinkled with enlightenment. It's also remarkably well mapped and signposted, so you can spend two hours beach hopping or two weeks hiking right across the island. Since Menorca is the first place in Spain to see the sun each day, it's also the first place where, at the end of the day, you can legitimately sip a sundowner. Time for a beer. Choose your favourite spot beside the harbour. Let the warm breeze waft the scent of a sunny day as you sip your reward and have a manana moment. Plan your adventures for next day. Taking a step into the past is easy in Menorca. If you want to commune with the ancients, for example, well, this has been called the oldest roofed building in Europe. Over three millennia ago, it was built here, the Navetta des Tudons. The construction is remarkable using carefully matched stones without cement, in much the same way as the Inca stonemasons of South America many centuries later. The name Navetta, it means an upturned boat. And in some of these, they found over a hundred skeletons in them. Some of them wearing primitive bronze jewelry, as if they were going on to another life. On the other side of Menorca, you can find this strange Bronze Age taula, a T-shaped structure whose meaning isn't yet known. Although in the 1930s, a team of Cambridge archaeologists did try to find out. They were led by one Margaret Murray, who caused a bit of a stir by wearing trousers and smoking cigarettes, sometimes at the same time. Menorca's wild side, represented here at the beautiful lagoon of Sabulfera, which is at the heart of the biosphere reserve that the island has become. It looks so remote, so exotic here, that it's impossible to believe that London is just two hours flight away. Menorca is recognised by UNESCO as one of 400 biosphere reserves around the world, which means that natural resources and cultural heritage are conserved for future generations. To end your stay on a high note, come here to El Toro, which is Menorca's very own Mount Everest, the highest point on the island, over a thousand feet above the Mediterranean, and from which you can see, well, pretty much every corner of the island. The rest of the world melts into the haze on the horizon, which is just as well, really, because whatever you want, you can probably find it here on this green and glorious island. For a moment, I thought I was in Rio. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's terrible. You can't use that.